Hey, what's up? I'm Buzz, and this is Ken Susie with Lancelot Link, the Secret Chimp, and you're watching The Belly with David. Pretty much started my career <laughs> off with that noise and ended it with that noise. <laughs> Was there anything in the middle? Yeah. No. No. We get the monkey in the shot too. The monkey's back there. Yeah. Oh, he's the over the shoulder monkey. We think. Oh yeah. I'll oh, yeah. Move it a little bit over. We're gonna get this right. Just yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. Set it up. Lovely. Yeah. He's gotta be there. We bring him to every unit. Yeah. Can that? Yeah. Yeah. Me. <laughs> All right. Ah. Uh, Ready to go? Yeah, ready to party. Right, here we go. Hi, I'm Dave from DeBelly. We're at Club Rock tonight. Well, we're going to talk to an Earth and a monkey, apparently. <laughs> Coco. <laughs> Coco. Coco the monkey. Okay, we're with Ken and Buzz and uh, on Earth. Hey, uh, congratulations on the extinctions. Tell me a little bit about the record. Well, I'd like to thank my family, my friends, the Academy, for uh, <laughs> voting on this record for its success, right? Not failure. Um, no, it's cool. It's a good record. Buzz, uh, Buzz, I think, likes it, too. I love it. <laughs> I believe it's up for a Grammy nomination. <laughs> yeah. We'll see you guys in February on the red carpet. <laughs> wonder what the monkey thinks of that. Well, the monkey, we'll ask him later. He's too busy slinging feces. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, tell me a little about recording the album, putting it together. I mean, it took you four years. Uh, you must have done something that time as far as writing and recording. So be surprised. We didn't do anything. We yeah. just toured a little bit and then we were like, yeah, I want to write a record. And then uh, we slowly started to do it and that was pretty much it. Yeah. Pretty exciting. Spent most of my time, you know, stringing my guitar and tuning and then playing. <laughs> Uh, that was the bulk of my my time, uh, but it was it was yeah it was a cool process. We got to work with a lot of cool people uh, that we haven't worked with before, like Will Putney and stuff. So uh, you know, and uh, it's been fun, you know. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. I was going to ask about Will Putney and uh, talk a little bit about what he brings to the record as far as producing everything. A very serious <laughs> face. Like no, Will, Will's great. Like we went to his studio, we did pre-production with him, and he he had his. Uh, it was up to us, obviously, to write a record, and uh, we wrote the record and then uh, kind of submitted it to him. And uh, this is uh, one of those records that I think um, it was kind of held intact for the most part. Uh, but when Will uh, put his hands on it, we started shifting things around, and he was really creative. I think Will added a couple riffs, you know, during those the, the sessions. What's uh, what was cool about what was cool about Will is that he's been a fan of the band for a long time, yeah. and for him, he kind of got to interject what some of the or. I guess highlight some of the things that he really enjoys about the band. Yeah. So it was kind of cool to have that done. Anyway. He he basically told Buzz that he was a big fan of the band just to keep his morale up in the studio while he's tracking. He's like, I'm a really good, a big fan of you guys. And Buzz is like, oh, sick. And I was like, I could see through every every bit of it. No, if, Will, Will's amazing, and I would love to work with him a million times over. If my, ego, if my ego deflates in the least, I can't play. <laughs> Well, it sounds like the songs were, you, know, you mentioned they were stable. It sounds like they've been around for a little bit of time. As, as we know, songs kind of grow a little bit after their initial birth and uh, evolve a little bit anyway. Well, we're older gentlemen now, so uh, I, have, <laughs> I don't have the same time that I, do, that I did when I was like 20 to write a song because I was basically just out gallivanting with females and whatnot. But now I'm more uh, secure in my life and I only have the weekends to do uh, fun stuff. So... For me, I was just basically cranking out like a song or two, or a song, you know, every weekend, and uh, and we just put it together. But I didn't. I, I think Buzz and I probably we both could say the same thing. I, I don't think we want to rush anything. We just want to make sure we had the right material. We um, went both. We had we had a lot of material, yeah. a lot of songs that we really uh, narrowed down in in the end uh, to some of the best ones, and then even trimmed some from there. Yeah, I thought I read that you had something like 24, 25 songs, and obviously trimmed down to the final ten or so to get onto the album. <laughs> More like a hundred. <laughs> I'm sure we had a trip. We have like six records. It's supposed to be a double album concept record. The front side was obviously, uh, you know, this whole extinctions thing, and Trevor kind of bailed on that second record, uh, Brown Side of the Moon, which I had. It was going to be like the Pink Floyd emblem with 
feces coming out one side and that one light just shooting in there, like a, the prism. But uh, that's a whole concept record. We'll get to that. Next yeah, don't give, too much, don't give too much away. <laughs> I'm sure the Academy would have embraced that. I mean, like, come on. I mean, yeah. I mean, once we go up against King Diamond for uh, our Grammy nomination, we'll see who wins. <laughs> We love, we love King Diamond. That's, we're, we're hoping that we're against King Diamond and Weird Al and we lose to Weird Al or King Diamond. <laughs> if, we're, if Weird Al puts out a metal record. <laughs> what do you mean if? Come on, how could he not? I mean, he could he do anything. <laughs> no, he does a sick cover of uh, Disturbed, the ooh yeah. ah, 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 ah song. Yeah. Dude, like he's got an accordion, an accordion, <laughs> <laughs> and he's just ripping it. Like, uh -huh. uh, sick. Check it out if you get the chance. We're Yeah. Well, you've been on a tour. This is the, well, I'm now learning the second from last night of the uh, tour itself. How did the tour go? Did you have fun with it? It's been so boring. Boring. Like, I wish this is not even a funny part of the segment. <laughs> it's like, we drive, we play the show, the show has been good, and then we go to the hotel and we go to sleep and we wake up and we drive and we go to the show, we play the show. We came, we saw, we went. And it just... Like, we don't even have any cool stories. Like, I'm going to come home and be like, hey, anything cool happen? I'm like, I don't think so. No, we don't do it. That was it. How can you say that when you're sitting next to a monkey? Well, <laughs> what we didn't tell you is that a monkey has died on tour. <laughs> <laughs> we made this um, mural to remember Coco by. He literally, that, he was literally going to replace me because we look identical. <laughs> Well, I, uh, I, I'll have to imagine that uh, after you put out a record, you're going to do more than a month out on tour, that maybe in 2019 you guys are going to you know, play a, a show or two. Nah, maybe. Maybe not. No. <laughs> maybe phone, not. The maybe phone's not. not exactly ringing, so we're just going to just sit at home until somebody calls us. We've got a couple things here and there, but uh, no, I, like, I wish I had a better story to tell. Help us out if you're in a band. <laughs> they they want to go to Europe. They want to go to Japan. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. do have a Europe, uh, Europe tour planned with uh, Darkest Hour for some time in March, I believe. See? So that'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah, there is some Big competition here. between us. That goon, Mike Slybaum. Goon! 20 bucks for anybody that can take that guy out while he's playing during our set in Europe. I'm, 20 I'm calling his head out. Crisp Euros. <laughs> yeah. 20 euros, not even 20 dollars, 20 euros. He's the, he's the lead goon of that band. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to motivate some people out there, that's yeah. for sure. Um, God, I had a whole list of things I wanted to ask you. Let's see if we can get through it. Well, I hope you forget most of them. <laughs> <laughs> we certainly have. <laughs> the uh, the four-year gap, I mean, you guys go out on tour. It was a little bit of an extensive window right there, a little bit longer than normal. It was... They actually called me that in high school, the four-year gap. That was my oh. nickname, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I had a big gap. Yeah, well, at least you're famous. Yeah. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I just think that no, like, nobody cared, like, in that time. Nobody was like, we need to do it. Like, there was like four loud people online, like, looking for it. I was like, well, we'll get to it eventually, but no one was really clamoring for it. But if those four people text you about every 15 minutes, it seems like a lot. Oh, those, those yeah, right. four people... Uh, the guys, the same people that write us on Facebook when we show up to the show, we play the show, we leave that venue, and the next day they're like, oh, you should play Tucson, Arizona. We're like, dude, we were there last night. Where were you? <laughs> to be honest, though, this 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 album cycle actually had a lot of world touring. I think the, uh, we want to stay away from uh, a lot of markets that we normally played or, or have exhausted over the years. Yeah. I could say that we, we were, went weird. We were, yeah, we went weird. We were, we were did the <coughs> Pacific Rim and like all these other places. Uh, rim, uh, 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 little rim jobs, but uh, no, it was pretty amazing. Um, we just didn't really. Um, I think we we were equally as tired at, with certain territories as they were with us. So it was time to uh, we yeah. we went on a warp tour and the love was there. And then uh, the record has got great reviews. Uh, we're going to Europe and uh, it's, things are on the uptick. And I think it's because we just chose to go elsewhere for a little while just to see what's up. We want a vacation and play music. Hey, get a chance to see some cool places, open up some new venues, that's always a lot of fun. Yeah, mainly Buzz sleeping <laughs> in a hotel room and us just being like, why did we stay here an extra day? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? The same question. We'll go, to, we'll go to some exotic like territory that people pay to go to on vacation and we'll just, oh, let's do an extra day like in Bali or something. <laughs> yeah. And we just sleep and then the airport. Just, and I'm like, Buzz, you know there's a McDonald's down the street? He's like, yeah, I'll meet you there in 20 minutes. <laughs> We're awful. Well, there's a there's an interesting vibe to this record. It's sort of like, um, 
don't know. It's hard to quantify. Ken, I think Ken described it best as he called it VFW Hall Metal. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. It's basically it basically when we were 20 years old, we we were we were putting together a sound that we felt that was our sound, and then we put out the Oncoming Storm and blah blah blah, and then we start progressing. Now all of our records kind of changed. You know, we always try to do a thrash record with three and. You know, melodic record with uh, Darkness in the Light. I'm saying these names like people who know all the records. But, uh, <laughs> like, it's retrospective. I'm like, I'm over here. Um, but, um, <laughs> but um, no, this record, I think Buzz and I want, like, we had a uh, focused uh, kind of mindset towards what we want to achieve. And it was like, when we used to have fun on stage when we were kids, we played a certain type of music and we played and we performed it a specific type of way. And this record uh, leans to that. So, we're not going to, like, lie. And be like, this is the heaviest record of our lives. Every band says that. We're literally just saying, like, if you like us in 2001 through 2003, this probably is a record you'd like. So, was that a conscious choice, or is it just something you've evolved along the way? As I said, I called Buzz and I said, <laughs> "Do you want to do something like this? Because I sure as fuck do." And he was like, "Yes, Ken." I think it's <laughs> I think it's us at forty trying to emulate our best twenty year old selves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you played a little tighter, uh, you know, a little louder. No, or just no, no. I really think loud. we were better at twenty than we are at forty. So I'm not forty yet, but I plan to go downhill from here. It's weird too when you see older rockers; they're all like, <clears throat> playing together. You know what I mean? They're all energetic, and now they're like. We're in there like metal horns and weird goat leggings on stage. <laughs> We're always going to be a t-shirt and jeans wearing band that can, you know, questionably play our instruments live. It's tight. But it's cool. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> keep telling people that. <laughs> they'll, they'll buy some records. You keep saying all right, that. All right. Well, that's all I've got tonight. Uh, I'm sure you two have something, though. I mean, you must have. Come on. Can't wait to go home. Chill out, shit on my own toilet, you know? There it is. See Buzz occasionally at Kowloon's and Saugus, Route 1. Fucking Saugus wigs, brah. <laughs> if you're not living on the edge, you're taking up too much space. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, <laughs> with the belly, right here. There it is, there it is. <laughs> yeah, literally, Buzz and I don't talk when we're home. Only very seldom do we talk, and then I'll text him probably at like 9 at night, and I'll be like, Kowloon's? Question like, mark. Yup. <laughs> That's all that needs to be said. Oh, all, right. all right. Sounds good. Thank you much for doing your, your gig tonight. And, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys on stage and uh, well, more in 2019. Sweet. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Okay. David. <laughs> Thinking my lips is once a wall.